The first question is this. What are your beliefs on predestination in terms of individual souls being saved? Does God decide who will be saved and who won't be saved before any of us have come to be? Well, uh, you know, here we again, we're here we are again addressing that question of predestination. Uh, I have dealt with this on numerous occasions, not only on Ask the Pastor, but also on uh, my other podcast, Engaging the Mind. I have a whole archive of theological lessons that I've taught on Engaging the Mind. And you can always go back to those archives and you can find where I have taught on predestination, election, the sovereignty of God, and so forth. And now I'm going to go ahead and deal with it here today. Um, but this is a common question that people have. I guess that's the reason I have to deal with it so much. Um, but, but the questions are, you know, the per- person asked are, are, is this, is what are your beliefs on predestinations in terms of individual souls being saved? So the person asking, what do I believe? Okay. Well, first of all, I believe in predestination because predestination is in the Bible. Okay. Um, you know, you, you got that, you, you got the passage in Romans, um, where God says, uh, for, for, um, for those whom he foreknew, this is Romans 8, 29, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, or that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified. So I, obviously, I believe in predestination. I think any Bible-believing Christian has to believe in predestination. The question is, is what do you believe about predestination? Now, I don't want to give, get into all the theological terms, such as supralapsinarianism, infolapsinarianism. I just want to try to keep it, try to keep it simple. Really, you want to know of, of uh, what really your question is, is do I believe in double predestination? Do I believe that God, before we were ever created, that God determined who would go to heaven and who would go to hell? I mean, that's, that's supralapsinarianism, the fancy word for it. Uh, others refer to it as double predestination. Well, I'm going to tell you what I believe, and I'm going to answer it from the Scripture. Nowhere in the Bible does, dam- does God place damnation as a result of His predestination. Uh, for example, when you look at the book of Romans, uh, the cause of damnation is always Adam's sin and uh, the fact that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So I do believe that God predestines those who are saved and those whom are not, who are not. But the result of damnation is never placed upon God's predestination. Um, it is always placed upon Adam's sin, original sin, and the fact that we've all sinned. The Bible teaches that we are all dead in Adam, not dead because of God's predestination. We are all dead in Adam, okay? And uh, so I do believe that, uh, uh, that God predestines those who are saved and those who are not saved are damned because of their own sin. Okay? Now, I also want to tell you, I want to stretch your mind and get you to think with me just for a moment. Is how, how you know, you really can't talk, you can't, really can't talk about predestination without, you know, talking about election. And uh, uh, election first appears in the Bible in the Old Testament when God chose Abraham and then God chose the nation of Israel so that is God's election Uh, God is the same yesterday today and forever so the question is is did God here's my question did God predestine Abraham to be his chosen one before the foundation of the world do you believe that God predestined Abraham to be used of God to to uh to usher in a great nation? Well, I, I, I believe the answer is yes. I, I believe that a, 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 according to uh, the eternal decrees of God, God decreed even before a- Abraham was ever even born, even before creation, I believe that God decreed that Abraham would be his chosen vessel that he would use to usher in a great nation. Now, which brings us to the next question. Did God choose Abraham because there was anything special about Abraham? Was Abraham six foot tall 
Was he beautiful? Was there something attractive about Abraham that caused God to choose him? And the answer is no. I mean, Abraham was a, a pagan worshiper in a foreign land, and uh, but God sovereignly chose Abraham. Not because of anything that Abraham had done, God simply sovereignly chose Abraham to be his, his, his uh, elect tool, his elect means of ushering in a great nation. And again, did God choose, did God elect Israel because there was something special about them? No, as a matter of fact, they were the smallest of the nations. God simply chose Israel by his sovereign grace. He chose Abraham simply as the result of his sovereign grace. Why? Because he had predestined to do this before the world was ever created. We also look into the New Testament and we see that God saved the Apostle Paul the same way. I mean, as a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul was on his way to persecute Christians. He was not even looking for God. And he was persecuting followers of the way, those who follow Christ. And all of a sudden, God appears to him, supernaturally saves him. God chose Paul. He, he saved Paul by his sovereign grace. And I believe that God predestined that before the foundation of the world, according to Ephesians chapter 1. Okay? Now, God saved, now if you look at that, God saved Abraham the same way he did, or saved Paul the same way he did Abraham. Why? Because God's salvation has always been by the, has always been the same way. The result of his sovereign electing grace. So the question is, is how are you saved? You're saved the same way. You are saved by God's sovereign electing grace. God saved you. He, he, he granted you life. He granted you faith. He granted you repentance. He, he drew you unto himself. You were dead in sin, but he made you alive. And I believe that he determined to do that before the foundation of the world. Okay? So, yes, God does predestine those who are saved unto eternal life. But, I, but, but the damnation, the damnation of the non-saved is never um, attributed to God's predestination, even though if God, does, if, God if, he did, if he does work that way, he's perfectly good in it. But the scripture always points the, the consequence of damnation to the fact that we've all sinned in Adam. Okay? So the picture I like to think of, uh, of is, like, is like this. is that, that all of us, when Adam sinned, all of creation sinned against God. And out of, that, out of that pool of damnation, God chose a people for himself. Okay? All, of, all were damned. All deserved to go to hell because, because all had sinned. And out of that pool of damnation, God chose a people whom him, for himself whom Christ would come and die. And so that's more of that understanding of infolapsinarianism. Did God predestine before the fall, or did God predestine in light of the fall? That's the, that's how you, that's the difference between supralapsinarianism, double, predestin, double predestination, and infolapsinarianism after the fall, or in light of the fall, which is that idea that damnation is the result of sin, but God in His sovereignty has chosen an elect people to save for whom Christ came and died. OK, so that's my view. All right. Um, and I hope that answers your question. I believe it does.